All right, so I recently saw a TV that almost makes OLED look obsolete. Samsung's brand new micro RGB TV feels as bright as the sun. It almost hits perfect black levels, and it's the first TV ever to be technically capable of perfect color accuracy, except this thing costs $30 thousand dollars and it only comes in 115 inch sizes but here is the real problem when that price inevitably drops in like a year or two everyone who just dropped thirty five hundred dollars on a flagship oled might be kicking themselves so should you wait to buy this brand new micro rgb technology or should you just buy what's great right now because if micro rgb delivers on what i saw oled's reign as the king of tv tech could be over all right, so as of right now, three companies are making this micro RGB tech. Samsung calls it micro RGB, Hisense calls it RGB mini LED, and Sony is working on their own version, but they haven't announced what the name of that will be yet. I'm just gonna call it micro RGB because that's what Samsung branded it, and honestly, it's the easiest for me to remember. So I made a whole video on micro RGB, diving deeper into that tech, and I'll put the links in the description down below for that video if you wanna check it out after this one. I'll also put the links of any TVs that I mentioned in this video uh, I usually place some like TV deals that I might come across down there as well uh, so make sure that you're checking down in the description to see if there's anything good but to roughly summarize that video what micro RGB does is it takes red green and blue LEDs and makes them microscopic we're talking like smaller than the width of a human hair then it combines them into these like kind of tiny backlight units behind the LCD panel and this results in insane brightness. The Hisense model is hitting 8,000 nits, with the 2025 model supposedly reaching 10,000 nits plus. Samsung wouldn't say what their peak brightness was for their micro RGB set, but I've seen both, and it's definitely in that ballpark, and I've never seen TVs this bright before. And to maybe help like the non-TV nerds out there, uh, for context, nits are how we measure brightness, and most TVs top out around like 1,000 to 2,000-ish nits. So the, the brighter that a TV can get, the better it can handle things like reflections, the more it can make HDR highlights just kind of pop, and it's more usable in bright rooms. A really high-end OLED will reach around like 2,500 nits, and that is plenty bright to be seen perfectly in a very sunlit room. And micro RGB will be like 8,000 to 10,000 nits, so they bright. Samsung is also claiming that their set is the first TV to hit 100% of the BT 2020 color coverage. And that means perfect color accuracy for the content that you likely watch. And this actually matters a lot more than people think. BT 2020 is the color standard for SDR content and works kind of hand in hand with HDR color standards. Most TVs can only hit around like 70 to 90-ish percent of it. When you hit 100%, you're seeing colors exactly as the director intended. That sunset, it's not just orange. It's a very precise shade of orange that was captured in real life. Skin tones look more natural instead of like kind of too red or too yellow. It's not about the colors being necessarily more saturated. It's about them being correct. And there's even a chance that you might be seeing colors that you've literally never seen before in your entire life. And these sets have thousands of local dimming zones. So the contrast is way better than something like a mini LED TV. And when I saw micro RGB in person, the black levels looked very close to OLED. Not quite there, but the closest that I've ever seen. But here's where OLED is just kind of fundamentally different from LED tech. OLED pixels just produce their own light. They're self emissive. And that means infinite contrast, perfect black levels, and great viewing angles. Each pixel can just turn itself off when it needs to be black. There is no black light, bleeding, or anything like that. And the latest QD OLED panels from Samsung are hitting like over 2,300 nits of peak brightness, which is really impressive for a self-emissive display. So while I was standing in Samsung's headquarters for a demo, looking at this like brand new giant Samsung micro RGB TV, my first thought was, this looks incredible. But my second thought was, it still isn't OLED. And I mean, like, I'm standing in, like, the house of Samsung. How could I not be reminded of, like, how amazing their OLED TVs are? Again, on the micro RGB side, the black levels are very close, but they're just not perfect. There's still, like, a tiny, tiny bit of backlit glow that you get just from every single LCD tech. I don't think anybody, realistically, is going to be uh, noticing the difference in these black levels, you know, maybe except for, uh, like, TV reviewers or enthusiasts or something like that. They're just going to be standing there in complete awe of the brightness. Now, as for the viewing angles of this TV, 
they're certainly better than like the standard LED TVs that are out there, but they're not OLED. If you move off to the side, you will start to see that that contrast and color shift just a little bit. It's on par with like a high-end mini LED, which is still really good, but it's not OLED because OLED, you can get a perfect viewing angles from basically any angle at all. But again, micro RGB superpower is absolutely its brightness. But on top of that, you're gonna get color accuracy that's basically perfect, which is pretty wild to see. And there is zero risk of burning because they're not using like organic materials behind these panels. These sets should theoretically last way longer than OLED, probably significantly longer. Longer. So for a really bright room and maybe somebody who like watches a lot of content with static elements like sports tickers or uh, news channels, micro RGB is starting to look really appealing. Okay, so I think we talked enough about what each of these TV techs can do. Let's move over to when each of these technologies actually matters in your real life. If your TV is in like a basement theater or like a room where you can control like all of your lighting, OLED is gonna be completely unbeatable. That infinite contrast and perfect blacks in a dark room, it just creates an experience that nothing else can really match. Even if you just like mostly watch movies at night with like all the lights off, OLED, all day, that's gonna be the best thing for you. Uh, if you're a competitive gamer who cares about like response times and wants instant pixel response, OLED still going to be the answer. But if your living room has windows opposite of the TV and you're kind of like watching it during the day, brightness matters more than those perfect blacks, at least in my opinion. And I have this problem in my house. I have these like big windows on the wall, like kind of like next to my main living room set. And sometimes it feels like the sun is right outside of my window. And before you say anything, like we do have curtains that I close whenever uh, the light gets a little bit too much, but like I personally like a lot of natural light in a home. So really bright TVs have been the only way that I can have my cake and eat it too. Another thing to consider is if you leave something like like cable news on for hours with that ticker on the bottom, burn-in becomes a real thought, even if it's very, very low risk. If your TV is on for like 12 hours a day showing the same UI elements, OLED, it might not be the move for you. That is where micro RGB would shine, you know, like once it's actually available in reasonable sizes and prices. That extra price, the longer lifespan, the zero burn-in risk, those things matter for specific use cases. But in saying all that, I think just about everybody would be absolutely thrilled with any current OLED, especially QD OLED TVs. The latest QD OLED TVs from Samsung, uh, again, like I mentioned before, are hitting over 2300 nits of peak brightness. That is certainly bright enough for the vast majority of living rooms, even the ones with the brightest of windows. So unless you're like putting a TV like directly across from the wall, like a sun facing window with absolutely no curtains, you're probably going to be fine. But even so, like the anti-reflective screens on the Samsung QD OLED sets are so good that you're probably still going to be fine in some pretty unfortunate lighting scenarios. With QD OLED, the picture quality, honestly, it just speaks for itself. It's got perfect blacks, infinite contrast, and colors that pop without looking fake. And those viewing angles, they stay consistent no matter where you sit. And there are some incredibly color accurate OLED sets out there. The Sony Bravia 8 Mark II, for example, gets so incredibly close to those Hollywood grade monitors. And the processing performance is just simply unmatched in the industry. For movies, for TV shows, for gaming, OLED simply delivers an experience that is genuinely hard to beat in the TV space. Again, the problem with all of this is price and availability. Uh, micro RGB is only available right now in these massive sizes for these massive prices. Samsung's 115 inch set, again, is $30,000. Hisense's 116 inch set, which is an elite prices right move, is $25,000 and that, is the entire issue. It's just not a TV that most people can buy. I mean, like at that price, it's like, honestly, nobody should be buying them. And it's certainly not available in sizes that most people want in their home. OLED, on the other hand, has the advantage of being available in tons of sizes with tons of different price points. You can get an LG B5 OLED for like less than $700, depending on the size and the time of year. Uh, I've seen an LG C5 for less than like $1,200 on sale, and that is a phenomenal set. And you can get like flagship models like the LG G5 or the Samsung S95F for around like the 2000 to 3500, again, kind of depending on the size and time of year. There is a whole range of these TVs. Response times are incredible for gaming. The picture quality in a dark room is completely unbeatable. OLED is the king for a reason. Just because you rain does not mean that you cannot fall. And if OLED should be worried about anything on the immediate horizon, it's definitely micro RGB. 
but there's really like kind of no way to know what these insane $30,000 prices are gonna look like in like a year or two and like when they'll be affordable. But you can get some clues with like the current mini LED market and the 8K. TV market. So little history, uh, TCL came out with the first mini LED in 2019. Crazy that it was not that long ago. Uh, mini LED feels like it's been around kind of forever. That TV cost $2,000 for a 65 inch, which felt expensive uh, then, especially when like good LED TVs were like 500 to $1,100 or so. But that was nothing compared to when Sharp released the first 8K TV all the way back in 2015. Their 85 inch 8K TV was $133,000. 10 years later, you can now buy an 85 inch AK TV for like $4,000. So that's a big price drop. But here's why prices drop so dramatically with LED tech. LED panels are fundamentally just easier and cheaper to manufacture than OLED panels are. The supply chain is mature, the manufacturing processes are well understood, and companies can ramp up production volumes relatively quickly. When Samsung, Hisense, and Sony all start competing to make micro RGB at scale, the competition is going to drive innovation in manufacturing and push prices down really fast. And we're not talking about like one company who controls the entire supply chain uh, with some LED production like LG does. Multiple companies are going to be fighting for market share and that means aggressive pricing. OLED took longer to come down in price because like the manufacturing it's the manufacturing process is just more delicate. The materials degrade and fewer companies can produce the panels at the quality levels that are needed. LED does not have those constraints. So when I say companies will figure out micro RGB at scale, I mean that we're probably looking at like a 18 to 24 month time period before we see smaller sizes and then maybe like another year or two before prices really start to drop. Now exactly when those prices will get under like that $5,000 range is really anybody's guess. Like two, maybe three years, uh, probably four or five to get to like that $2,500 range. So it's like really competing with OLED pricing. But I think once micro RGB gets under that $5,000, I think there's gonna be a lot of people who will start to feel more comfortable to start pulling the trigger on this premium LED tech. And when it dips below $2,500, the floodgates are gonna be completely open. Everybody is gonna want one of these sets but that's a long time to wait. And here's the thing about waiting. You're not just delaying a purchase. You're giving up years of actually enjoying a significantly better TV. So like, let's just say that you wait like whatever, like four years for a micro RGB to hit like $3,000. That's four years of watching movies on your current TV, four years of gaming, four years of binging shows. That's like almost like 1500 days uh, where you could have had something dramatically better than what you do right now. But here's the reality with all this stuff. When micro RGB eventually does come down in price, it's still going to be within its like first few generations. There will be quirks to work out, firmware updates to fix issues, kind of like the usual like early adopter stuff. Meanwhile, QD OLED is refined and proven. It's been through multiple generations. The problems have been solved. You're buying mature technology that works brilliantly today, not promising technology that might work brilliantly in like three years. And in the meantime, QD OLED, that thing is incredible right now. The Sony Bravia 8 Mark II and the Samsung S95F are about as good as TVs can get right now. Samsung's anti-reflective coating on the S95F is legitimately impressive. These sets are bright enough for sunlit rooms, which was OLED's kind of like biggest weakness for years. That's no longer a problem. The color accuracy and vibrancy is really incredible. And no matter how good micro RGB is going to get, it is never going to have infinite contrast. In dark rooms, OLED, it's still going to just look better. Micro RGB's advantages are, again, brightness and size availability once all of this kind of stuff scales up. OLED's advantage is always gonna be picture quality and just the fact that it's available right now. So if you're buying a TV today, you're not necessarily choosing between OLED and micro RGB. You're choosing between OLED and mini LED, at least right now. And depending on your room and budget, either can still be the right choice for you. So will that $3,500 OLED that you bought today become obsolete whenever micro RGB arrives? Absolutely not. By the time that micro RGB is affordable, uh, you've gotten like three or four years of incredible use out of that OLED. And even then, micro RGB, I don't think it's going to make 
OLED necessarily obsolete. It's just gonna be another option uh, for different use cases. And choice is something that you want injected more into the world of TVs. I know it feels overwhelming at times, but like choice is definitely going to be king and it's good for the consumer. Now, will it be as popular and go the same route as mini LED and start to outsell OLED? Have no idea. Or will the next evolution of OLED, FOLED, get here before micro RGB becomes affordable? And yes, FOLED is the actual name of the progression of OLED. It's gonna be the next technology past that, as silly of a name as it sounds. Uh, but all of this is completely unknown. But what I do know is if you're sitting there looking at your older set, maybe the one that you're like watching this video on uh, right now, and you want something new, but you aren't sure if it's worth spending the money right now. You don't know if you're gonna be wasting it or if you should just wait a few years to get the latest and greatest. Micro RGB is legitimately worth getting excited about, but it's not here yet. So just stop worrying about what's coming tomorrow and get what works for you today because the tech of today is really, really incredible. But again, if you want tons of recommendations for me for some incredible sets that you can actually buy today, I put all the links in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.